And uh, Brian's out today, but Cammie Blackstone from KFRC is over in San Francisco. Good morning, Cammie. Good morning, Ross. Good morning, everybody. We are live in San Francisco from San Francisco's South Park, where Pat Johnson, rock and roll photographer to the stars, is uh, getting ready for his big exhibit for uh, 25 years. You've been shooting people, right? Well, yep. not shooting people, but taking their pictures. Yep. Okay, so you've been doing this for 25 years. You've got everybody that's come to town. Quickly, who are your top five favorite photographical subjects, if that's a word. No, oh, I'd have to say the Jacksons, uh, Mick Fleetwood, the Stones, Culture Club, Snoop Dogg, oh, James goodness. Brown. This is like an honor roll. This is like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame right here in your studios. Now, you're getting ready for a big retrospective coming up? Yeah, it's uh, February 5th is the uh, opening party, and it runs from the 6th to the March 1st at Art Rock. At 1155 Mission Street. Well, cool. We are going to find out all about your exhibit and what it's like to shoot these famous people and the stories behind the pictures when Mornings on Two continues. I feel good. I knew that I wouldn't. I feel good. 12 minutes now before 8 o'clock. Uh, back to Cami uh, Blackstone filling in for Brian Culpin this morning with one of the best rock and roll photographers around. Hey, Cami. Hi, good morning, Frank. Good morning, Tori. We are here with Pat Johnson, who's getting ready for a big retrospective. 25 years of taking pictures of rock and roll stars. Out of 25 years, how could you pick pictures to uh, put on display? It wasn't easy. It took us about three, four years of going through 7,000 envelopes. 7,000 envelopes! We'll, we'll check out some of those pictures and hear the stories behind the photo sessions when we continue on Mornings on 2. At 7.53, here's Cammy Blockstone. Thank you very much, Sal. Now, I'm here with Pat Johnson, rock and roll photographer. Now, you have been taking pictures of major rock and roll acts and music acts for 25 years. You do it, what, live and in the studio? Uh, yeah, mostly in the studio now. The, the uh, old days, it was much more fun, much more easier for a photographer. You could just go, go into the concert with a camera. Even a fan could bring a camera in and take a picture. Oh, now they're like Nazis. They oh, don't let anybody in there horrible. with a camera. You're going with if you, it's six months of conniptions and then you go in there and they give you one or two songs and then they kick you out and if you have tickets you can't have your camera in the place so you've got to go put them in the car which you're afraid it'll get stolen so but now you've got a picture here of uh, mick jagger rolling stones how did you get this one well this was in 75 it was an assignment for the san jose mercury news for a poster that they were doing in the for the sunday supplement and again i didn't pick up the phone and call anybody i just got a biker friend of mine and we walked into the concert i squirreled my way up front saying, excuse me to everybody they're trying to be polite we got up close enough that my buddy, the biker, got on, down on his hands and knees. I got up on his shoulders. He stood up. We took two, three rolls of film, took these great photographs. I really loved this Mick Jagger one and got back down, thanked everyone that we bothered while we took the pictures and kind of slid back out. And that was the great old days of being a music photographer. Well, but now it's still fun for you, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's, it's just not as accessible. It's hard to get at them. Well, now, here we got a picture of James Brown, the godfather of soul. Now, how did you get this great up-close and personal shot? Oh, James, I've done him about two or three times, and he's one of my all-time heroes. You know, he's the godfather of soul, but the great thing is, is when, we, when you meet him, you have to, you have to be, call him Mr. Brown. So I go up to him, and I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and Jim Brown was the great football star, so I go up to James Brown, I go, Mr. Brown, I want to introduce myself. I have two f people that I grew up with that I idolized named Brown, James Brown and Jim Brown. He looks at me and goes, I love them Atlanta Braves. You know, <laughs> You know, so so he goes. He starts talking, and he talks like he sounds like he sings like, like, like a machine gun. So he goes. He tells one of his guys, you know, I met the Pope. I just met the Pope. So he sends one of. Oh, his that has got to be a picture. The Pope uh, and James Brown. That's a classic. He, so he says, the Pope likes my music. The Pope, the Pope, he like my music. And, <laughs> I, and I get this mental image of Tom Cruise in his underwear, the Polish Pope who barely speaks English. You know, <laughs> dancing to get up off of that thing. You know. So he sends out the picture, and I've, again, I'm, picture, I'm thinking the Pope, is, here's a picture, a formal picture of him and the Pope, and he gives me this color Xerox, I have it in the studio, of him leaning over the barrier, shaking hands with the Pope. It's, it's hilarious. Oh, that is classic. Now, we've got another picture here, the Jackson 5, young Michael Jackson. <laughs> Look how cute he was before all the plastic surgery. Now, the Jacksons, they spent three days with him in 75, riding around, go, going to different venues and doing photo shoots, and 
You know, out of all the people I've met, Michael Jackson and David Bowie, but Michael is one of the nicest people I've ever met. I was expecting this superstar kid that was had been uh, a superstar since he's five, and he'd turn to me and go, Pat, what'd you do last night? And I'd go, oh, I played softball. And he'd go, did you win? And I'd go, well, yeah. Uh, how'd you do? Uh, I went two for four. And I, you know, oh, that's great. And what does your wife do? And he's just the nicest guy in the world. But I didn't, I didn't, don't envy him. For example, they decided that they wanted to go to the wax museum on the wharf. No announcement. We just all pulled up in the limos, went to the wax museum. We were there. How long can you be in the wax museum? Half hour. We come out and there's 400 people out there oh screaming. Goodness. Well, listen, stick around. We're going to have more stories and more pictures from Pat Johnson, his uh, big exhibit opening, uh, coming up next on Mornings on Two. <laughs> Twelve minutes after eight o'clock, Cammy Blackstone in for Brian Copeland today over in San Francisco. Good morning, Cammy. Good morning, Ross. Have you uh, recovered from the Stones concert the other night? Well, I didn't get a chance uh, to go. I just had to read all the reports in the paper and everything, and they're getting good reviews, actually. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I know you're a big uh, rock and roller yourself. You'll want to check out Pat Johnson's new exhibit at Art Rock. We have some more pictures of some of your other favorite bands, Ross. Uh, let's see, Pat. You took this one of Culture Club back in the '80s. Yes. Uh, the great story about that is, is they came in to do the shoot and they wanted to do something American so I put them in my softball uniforms which were the Phantoms we played together for 15 years and then I put them in the Cleveland Indians hat because I'm a Cleveland boy but the funny story is, is we're, I had a, a tape on of like oldies music and the tape ended and I said George is there anything you want to hear in particular he goes do you have any, do you have any show tunes I said I have West Side Story he goes ooh too violent I said, wow. <laughs> Jeez, you know but he's a great guy. Really. Well, speaking of violence, a lot of people think Snoop Doggy Dog being a kind of a gangster rapper is a violent guy, but you shot him and, uh, well, took pictures of him. What yeah. was he like? Oh, you know, surprise, I was really surprised. He was really a gentle, nice man, and we spent an hour or so doing the shoot, and when we're all done, a bunch of the people there wanted to have their photo taken with him, and the whole time he's doing this W for the West Side, which is, you know, something that, you know, the, pe to do that. the people in the, the air biz know. <laughs> So I'm all done with the shoot, and I go, geez, what a nice guy. Do you mind if I take a shot with you? And he goes, sure. So we ju I jump in, and he's like this, and I go like this. What's that? And I go, that's, he go, he, that's what he said. What's that? And I go, that's P for Pat. So he bursts into laughter, and I f don't think anything about it. And two weeks later, he's on Beavis and Butthead Marathon, and the whole week's commercial is him sitting with Beavis talking. At the end of the commercial, Snoop Dogg steals my tagline, my gang line, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and ends the commercial with P for Pat. I was a hero with my Little League team, my manager, and my kids. They thought I was the coolest. Pat Johnson, rock and roll photographer and gangsta. There you go. <laughs> well, you got your big exhibit happening at Art Rock. It opens February 6th. If you want more information, the number to call is 415-255-7390. Thanks for hanging out with Thanks, us. Thanks, Jamie. We're going to have French Stewart, TV's new favorite alien from Third Rock from the Sun, coming up next on Mornings on 2.